So let's start talking about one of my favorite portrait photographers, Irving Penn. Um, Irving Penn was an American photographer. He died in 2009, so that wasn't all that long ago. Um, he worked for um, many high fashion magazines. So like when I think of Irving Penn, um, most people and myself included think of like a Vogue magazine, like a fashion magazine, okay? Um, he liked to use a simple lighting setup. And it, he usually worked with a one simple light and it was over to the side. So it, this is a photograph he took of Pablo Picasso. Notice how there's one light source it's over to the side. Notice me today. I have one light source over to the side. I did that on purpose. And the background is totally minimal. It's blank. There's nothing on the walls, but it's a backdrop, right? And then he wanted you to just be drawn right to the eye of his subject. And he very much so succeeded. So let's look at some more of Penn's work. Again, high fashion photography, um, extreme, you know, clothes, makeup, hair. That's part of like the runway, right? Um, and personality, right? Personality plus. So I'm sure he was directing his models and telling them exactly what he wanted them to do. But again, in these, I want you to notice the contrast between the subject and the background, that simple background and that very simple light setup. This next portrait is just incredibly beautiful. Very little negative space, zooming right in on the eye. Now that highlight there, that's called a catch light. And if you look at the catch light, you can really just sort of go into your subject. And that's what you want to focus on. So where the light, the highlight is hitting the eyeball, that's your focal point. This portrait he took of Miles Davis, who is a musician, it just looks so incredibly strong and symmetrical. Look, if we were to draw a line right down the middle, it would be even on both sides. But notice that Miles Davis's eyes are higher than ours, which really shows the power that Penn felt for this musician. RBG, RIP, right? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, Penn photographed her in 1993 in New York. I want you to look at the background in this. Nothing. There's nothing there. How could you achieve this in your house if you don't have a backdrop? How about a sheet or just a wall? Take everything off of it. Move everything so that you can really focus on your subject. All right, so how do we make this work? Very simple. We're going to make simple portraits using a variety of light placement, just like Irving Penn. Okay, so let's look at what we need to do this. Let's start with our materials. First thing we need is a light. Now, what can you use if you don't have a modeling light? If we're at school and we have a modeling light, we'll use one of those. But if not, what could we use? How about a desk lamp? If you have a desk lamp or a small table lamp that you could use, maybe take the shade and take it off. See what happens when you do that. Change the direction it's going. You would be amazed at the kind of homemade modeling light you probably already have in your house. Think of a floodlight from the garage. Maybe you have one of those. Or my favorite light lately is the flashlight on my iPhone. It is quite a wonderful light source that I can use. And I'm going to um, recommend that that's what you use for this project. So handy and accessible, too. Okay, um, next thing that you're going to need, friends, you're going to need a model. Um, I recommend the human kind. Um, and if you don't have a human nearby, you can always use an egg if that's convenient. Something that would be um, smooth, simple, that you can sort of the rounded shape of the head that you could play with the lights with. But again, I'm hoping for humans here, people. Um, next thing that you're going to need is a backdrop of some kind. If you don't have that, you could try a sheet, like I said, or take the stuff off the wall. Just make it plain. I want a minimum background. Okay, so now how do we do this? Very, very simple. So imagine that blue line is a backdrop. You're going to place your subject two to three feet in front of the backdrop. This is to avoid harsh shadows. The next thing you need is your light. Now, when you have your light, what you're going to imagine is that that light is going to move, just shift it around your subject, and that's going to change the way the light is. Look, see, if I take my, oops, if I take my flashlight and I move it around me, watch what's happening. See what's happening as I'm moving it around me? It's changing what's being lit. You could even light the back of your subject. Watch what happens if I turn, let me turn this light off. Look, I can light the back of me, the front of me. Look at how that's changing me. So all I'm doing is just playing with the degree, the angle that it's coming out of, 
you can put it underneath. That's kind of scary. I am the leprechaun. Don't do that. Don't do that. Not a good idea. I mean, unless you want to, of course, just have fun. That's the idea, you guys. Have fun with this, okay? So that is it, my friends. I want you to take at least 12, give me 12 pictures so that we can play with those. Um, I want you to enjoy this and uh, we'll see how you do. Looking forward to it.